Well, welcome, brothers and sisters. I'm pro-life leader Frank Pavone, National Director of Priests for Life, and it is a joy for me to welcome you to this first edition of a new segment on our broadcast uh, episodes, and that is Pro-Life Update with Bishop Strickland. Now, most of you know Bishop Joseph Strickland, Bishop Emeritus of Tyler, Texas, and someone who has come to be well-known and loved within the pro-life movement, as well as in many other movements that are upholding uh, the teachings of the church and the teachings of Jesus Christ, the deposit of faith that has been handed on to us. And so at a recent um, uh, time when Bishop and I were together, we spoke about the possibility of uh, him coming on regularly. He's been on before, various interviews with us. Uh, but I asked if every once in a while we could talk about some of the latest developments within the pro-life movement. In each one of these segments, which will be relatively short, we'll just comment on something of current concern uh, to pro-life advocates, and we'll uh, be able to uh, enjoy the, uh, the guidance, the teaching, the wisdom, and the encouragement of Bishop Strickland. So it's my pleasure now again to welcome the bishop uh, to our program. And uh, Bishop uh, Strickland, how are you doing today? Good. Thanks, Frank. Good to be here. It's good to see you. And uh, can we begin uh, in, uh, let's just turn to the Lord in, in prayer and I'll introduce our segment. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Lord, we thank you for the calling that you place on the life of each of us, a calling to, to live uh, our human life, a calling, a calling to live the new life of Christ, and a sp very specific calling that you give to each of us to minister to your people in different ways and to advance the cause of life. Today, we ask your blessing in a particular way on our advocacy for life. May it be clear, consistent, courageous, and compassionate. May we show that the gospel of life is the gospel of mercy. May we demonstrate that we are uncompromising on principle and yet as wise as serpents in pragmatism and political mm -hmm. advancement. Show us, Lord, how indeed, as you taught us in the Gospels, to read the signs of the times and to be wise in our use of this world's goods. Encourage us today, bless us and protect us. Lord Jesus, you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bishop, I'm sure our listeners, first of all, uh, would love to hear an update from you about your current activities. I think many of them see you at different conferences or on different uh, podcasts. And, and just give, give our audience a, a bit of an idea of how you're doing in your, your ongoing mission of proclaiming the gospel of Christ. Well, thanks, uh, Frank. Um, I think it's going well. I'm really in many ways busier than ever, uh, traveling a lot and doing a lot of uh, podcasts and other um, online work. Um, I do have a few things that I do online myself, a YouTube channel now that, and really just trying to share the, the glorious truth that is Jesus Christ, as we know, he's truth incarnate. And I'm, I'm honored that you speak of me as one who is known for speaking for the sanctity of the life of the unborn because it is the preeminent issue. And I, I feel really called to continue to speak to that. So many of my activities are connected with the sanctity of life of the unborn. I was fairly recently out in California at a men's march for the, the sanctity of the life of the unborn. I went to a pro-life banquet in uh, Louisville, Kentucky recently. Um, it's And really, as I know we both agree, uh, the preeminent issue is abortion, but yeah. there's so many struggles and problems in our world that flow out of that basic lack of appreciation and of guarding the sanctity of the life of the unborn, then the, the tentacles of that evil reach out in many ways. And so I'm involved in speaking on various topics that are related to life and, and maybe not the unborn always, but when we get that wrong, we get a lot of the, the sanctity of life for people from conception to natural death. We get it wrong and we've got to speak the truth of Christ. 
Exactly. Uh, now, of course, the truth in terms of abortion, I wanted to, to help our audience today because, as you know, at this moment in American pro-life history, uh, we have a lot of debate going on about pro-life policy because we're on the, the eve of a, of a very, very uh, consequential election. Um, and we've got different people proposing different policies. And we see a lot of disagreement. Uh, some people saying, uh, you know, that they want more protective legislation. Others saying, well, we can only go so far, maybe a 15-week ban and so forth. And I wanted to help our people think through this because um, we can distinguish for them, number one, the uncompromising moral stance that abortion is never justified, not even a single abortion. But at the same time, to show them that that is consistent with being practical in the realm of politics and legislation, God doesn't require us to do the impossible. We don't have a magic wand that we can wave in order to implement into public policy what we acknowledge to be moral principle. So could you guide us in your own words on uh, how to understand this so that people don't feel like they're morally compromising if they advocate for a particular piece of legislation, which perhaps represents as far as we can go at the moment. Yes, thank you, Frank. Um, I'm sure we both prayed about this a lot and really considered it. One thing that occurs to me that, and I'm glad, please feel free to correct me if I say anything that you don't exactly agree with, because it's important that we get it right. And it, it can be complex, but it's also ultimately fairly simple. Um, one thing that's occurred to me as I've thought about this question of the coming election and how do we stand for the sanctity of life always, but navigate the realities that we face with candidates that provoke, propose very imperfect, lacking in the sanctity of life in too many ways, proposals that are offered really by any party or any candidate. Uh, so as you said, we don't, we live in a very imperfect world. One thing that is a guiding principle for me is if every child that we can save, every life is sacred, every life is a wondrous gift from God. So never to discount that we can save one child with moving in this direction. Hopefully we can save many children like the, um, the, removal of Roe v. Wade as the guiding law of the land uh, has saved children. And so that's a step in the right direction. I think we, we do have to be careful not to say, well, if it's not perfect, then we reject it. Because then we don't save a lot of children that can be saved. So it's kind of an incremental um, approach that, as you said, very clearly, it's not an incremental approach to what the sanctity of life means. It means every life is sacred from conception to natural death. But when we enter into the complex world and the broken world of American politics, we need to take every victory, every life saved as a victory. And I think that as we navigate the election, we're likely to be faced with choosing a candidate that is less than perfectly aligned with the sanctity of life, the life of the unborn always. But I guess my approach is to choose the best we can. I think it's pretty clear without getting deep into the politics and endorsing a candidate. It doesn't take much study to see that uh, some candidates are just totally eliminated from even possibly voting for them. Uh, others are not perfect, but the best we can get. And I think that the approach that I would suggest, one thing, one principle, we need to vote. We need to say, not step away from the voting booth because we can't, we don't have a perfect choice, or we don't even have a choice that we especially like maybe. We need to vote, we need to make our choice known, and then we need to stay active in all aspects of our, our government, but especially in the sanctity of life areas. And move those candidates along that are at least somewhat in maybe incremental ways on the right path. We need to continue to educate them. Many of the candidates 
are open to that and will respond if we don't attack them, but we just present rationally the truth of the sanctity of the life of the unborn and the sanctity of life across the spectrum. So we need to get the best candidates we have, which may be very imperfect, in office, and then continue to work with them and encourage them and urge them and give them the proper information. That's true for all of us. Continue to learn what we need to know because the reality of, of abortion the taking of the life of unborn children. Certainly um, what's called uh, abortion itself, surgically removing a child um, by a medical operation that really isn't medicine at all, but it's an attack on life. But we have to also remember that even the laws that are banning uh, abortion, we still have to be aware of like the abortion pill and other things that are threats to life that with the medical technologies we have, um, people that are not respecting life can find ways around just about any law we can propose. And, and I think that's important to remember as well. Even if we had a candidate who was fully endorsing the, the sanctity of the life of the unborn, the job isn't done because our culture, our, too many in our society, don't believe in the sanctity of the life of the unborn. And through chemical abortion, through pills, through whatever means, they're determined to have the right to take the life of children in the womb. So I think we have to be realistic with our eyes wide open to the realities we face, not being so burdened by that, that we're paralyzed and we fail to vote and to be active and proactive in every way we can for the sanctity of life. But finally, to choose the best candidate we can to, to be aware of all the elements, and not just on the national level, but on the local and state level, all of those candidates can make a difference and save some lives of unborn. I'm in Texas, and we have some good laws in place that certainly aren't perfect, and it, we can't claim that abortion has been totally eliminated from the state of Texas, but at least it's moving in the right direction. And we need to continue to advocate for that and find the candidates that support us the best we can and continue to educate them and challenge them if they're taking positions that are less than what they should be. We work with those candidates are the best we've got and we continue to move them further down the spectrum of the sanctity of life so that no child from conception to birth is threatened with abortion. Thank you. Yeah, that's well said. I agree with all of that. And, and I think that, um, you know, one of the other ways I've been explaining this to people is to say, you know, when they say, well, people are trying to draw different lines at different points. Uh, when will we protect these babies? And I said, you know, first of all, we can't draw any lines regarding the protection of human life. You can't, you can't play God and say who's going to live, who's going to die. That's number one. But number two, if you're talking about drawing lines in terms of what legislation we're going to support, I make this distinction, and tell me, Bishop, what you think of it. There's a difference between drawing a line to take away protection. Like, for example, in Arkansas, uh, the babies are protected throughout pregnancy. Arkansas is one of the 14 states or so that are protecting the babies from conception. So the pro-abortion people are trying to introduce one of these ballot initiatives, and they're having a little dispute among themselves about where do we draw the line? Should we put it at 12 weeks so that, well, you know, maybe the public will be, it'll be more palatable for the public, or should we try to go the whole way and say abortion without limit? Okay, so when they try to draw a line like that, they're drawing a line to take away protection. And of course, none of that is legitimate. On the other hand, if, if someone came along in Texas, like you, 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 you said, and, and or, or rather the opposite example, if someone went to New Mexico where there's no protection for the unborn at all and they got the legislature to agree to protect babies starting at 15 weeks, but that's as far as they would go. Otherwise, they don't have the votes. You don't have a law. And so pro-life people said, yeah, we're in favor of the 15-week a limit in um, in uh, New Mexico. 
And then meanwhile, the pro-abortion people in Arkansas say, okay, we're going to draw this ballot initiative at 15 weeks. It's the same place that they're drawing the line. But it seems to be morally, those are exactly two opposite acts. To draw the line to take protection away from babies who already have it, you can never justify that. To draw the line to give the protection that the lawmakers are willing to give, and we're not even deciding where the line is. We're just saying, hey, that's the that's the opportunity you got now because those 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 lawmakers are willing to do it is perfectly legitimate. What 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 do you say to that? I I fully endorse what you just said, Frank. Um, and to me, it comes back to my simple. I'm a simple guy. But a lot of times the life issues are more simple than people want us to realize. Yeah. It what you what you just raised the scenario between Arkansas and New Mexico. It's about saving babies. If if changing a law in New Mexico saves more babies than are presently being saved, which from New Mexico is one of the worst, from what I understand. And there are very little protection for unborn children in the womb. So to save some of the babies because of whatever line they draw, at least it, anytime it's getting somewhere between conception and birth, a line that's drawn is going to save some children from being threatened with being, having their lives terminated in abortion. And so I fully agree. And if you're already in Arkansas where you've already got the protections, to try to keep them from, you know, uh, compromising and pulling back on those protections, we've got to fight that battle as well. So I think yeah. that's a great illustration of how complicated it can be. You can't just say, oh, a 15 week ban is terrible. Sometimes it may be better because they've got no ban. No, well, not at all. Right. Worse when, right. when that's moving back from protecting all unborn children. So we've got to be savvy about it and continue to, as you've said, we've got to be very clear, we morally can't accept any, but we have to live in a system that too often is accept, accepting abortion just across the board. And so any incremental um, progress we can make is a step in the right direction because it saves babies. Yes. <clears throat> Bishop, thank you so much uh, for your comments today and for your time. We look forward to welcoming you regularly, and we want to encourage people to go to your YouTube channel because I'm sure they're going to find a lot more uh, clarity and instruction and inspiration. So thank you for doing what you're doing. And may we ask you to uh, close us in prayer and, and give a blessing also to our audience? Sure. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for the blessing of our lives, for the opportunity to come to know the supernatural truth that is manifest in your Son, truth incarnate among us, the beauty of our Catholic faith, the, the teachings that guide us to live as your children, turning from sin and living the call of grace and virtue more and more deeply. We thank you for the work of Priests for Life and for Frank Pavone and all who collaborate with him to continue to proclaim the sanctity of the life of the unborn, which extends to the sanctity of life of everyone from conception to natural death. Lord, guide us in the light of your Son with the inspiration of the saints and the intercession of the Immaculate Virgin Mary. And we ask this prayer and blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Bishop. And thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us for this segment, Pro-Life Update with Bishop Strickland. And we look forward to the next time. Meanwhile, God bless you all. And thank you for what you do for the pro-life movement.